Dear friends, family born, family chosen, all of us who are here to make sure that dearest Kate, giant Kate, is never, never, never forgotten, is always part of our lives. I promised to share my time with someone who those of us of an age think of as Kitty McKinnon and whose students think of as Catherine McKinnon, who Kate asked to write the introduction to the new edition of Sexual Politics and whose introduction she loved. This is Kitty. Kate was the original genius of the most important ideas that animate the women's movement, hence politics, to this day. She saw relations between the sexes as political, meaning structured by power. She pioneered literary criticism as reality criticism, as a way to get at the world when men can write it however they want, given that they can make it be however they want. Crucially, she conceived the critique of sexuality as male-dominated from the bedroom to the boardroom, and she put in parentheses, to the potted plant. <laughs> Don't you kind of wish we could read Kate on Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> Also to the State House and beyond, fingering male-dominated sexuality as the basis of women's lack of freedom and our inequality. All our work against rape, sexual harassment, prostitution, pornography, and sex trafficking builds on her shatteringly brilliant insights in her 1970 book, Sexual Politics. As just one example, speaking of Janae, who treats gay as well as straight sexual relations, her reading of his play, The Balcony, finds him exposing, quote, the fundamental human connection, that of sexuality, to be the nuclear model of all the more elaborate social constructs growing out of it. In itself, not, obli not only hopelessly tainted but the very prototype of institutionalized inequality, unquote. Janae's play set in a brothel, inequality, institutionalized, is what its relations exhibit, quote, unless clinging to male supremacy as a birthright is finally foregone, Kate argues in that context, quote, all systems of oppression will continue to function because of their connection to sexuality. Her prostitution papers presented women's voices speaking of their own experiences of prostitution, breaking the waves for writings and organizations of survivors of prostitution that define and drive the worldwide movement for its abolition. Kate was trenchant and funny, serious and zany, creative and steadfast. As a friend, she was generous, loyal, receptive, and passionate. Her art hangs on my walls. Her words underlie my work. Her support comforts my back. Her voice and her smile warm my heart. Her love holds my hand. She will never, never leave our side. Thank you, Kitty. And for myself, uh, since I am lucky to share Kate's birth year, I am lucky to have known her for a seriously long time. <laughs> uh, I first was introduced to her words when our mutual friend, Sheila Tobias at Cornell, sent me pages from 
a friend's PhD thesis. And the three of us launched into an endeavor, as I remember, in trying to get Marx's wife's love letters into the Ladies' Home Journal. <laughs> what can I tell you? It didn't happen. <laughs> Subversive, but it didn't happen. Um, and as I read them, I thought, is it possible that a female American human being could be a great global intellectual? It had never, ever entered my mind before that this was even a possibility. Then we began to hang out, and I began to hang her art on my walls where it remains. Breast art, cunt art. <laughs> uh, and she forgave me so much. She forgave me that pot made me paranoid and I wasn't that interested in smoking pot. <laughs> she forgave me that I didn't know anything about wine and secretly preferred Werner's golden ginger ale yes. that <laughs> I had had in Toledo. <laughs> um, she um, laughed at my jokes, which was a serious concession <laughs> on her part, and all of my puns. Um, she let me hold her hand at that press conference after the Time magazine cover when we all gathered to defend her. Uh, after that ridiculous, ridiculous, stupid... <laughs> attack, and so we got to be an item for like two weeks, I think. <laughs> uh, she um, continued to be my instructor in gracious living, in elegance, in seriousness. Uh, she tried to teach me how to fertilize Christmas trees on her farm. <laughs> um, she taught me again the magic of a dinner table at that farm where women from so many different places and spaces and ages gathered together magically at what she understood must be a third of the work of the farm. Like everybody, I think, who changes our lives seriously, deeply, I remember when she entered it. I remember every single minute <laughs> that she was part of it. And I pledged myself to make sure, and I'll need help with us this given the age question, right, okay, but I pledge myself to make sure that her words are always, always out there and with us, and her spirit and her humor and her understanding and her global gift for changing our consciousness and thus changing our reality will never, never, never leave this earth. Thank you. Thank you.